Hello, and thanks for joining us again on the Odgers Burnson One Question Spring Series. Uh, my name is Jules McKean, and I head up the media practice for Odgers Burnson Executive Search out, out of London. Uh, today, I'm joined by the wonderful James Gibbons from Discovery. James, hi, thanks for joining us. Hello. Um, James heads up the UK and Nordics markets for Discovery, which are major international hubs for the, for, for the channel. In the UK, he's responsible for a business that encompasses real life entertainment, streaming service, Discovery Plus, and a portfolio of 15 pay TV and free to air channel brands that reach 34 million viewers each month. In the Nordics, Discovery ranks among the top three commercial broadcasters and operates Discovery Plus and 14 channel brands in four markets. James's commercial development team works across more than 140 EMEA markets. He's been with Discovery for 20 years, working in management roles and territories across the globe. Previously, he served as general manager for emerging business and head of product and business development for the Central and Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa region, spearheading transformative partnerships and significantly expanding Discovery's presence. He also led the growth and consolidation of its Japanese business in his role as president of Discovery Japan. Most recently, James played a key role in the completion of the UK TV transaction with BBC Studios, which saw Discovery strengthen its position as a leader in real-time entertainment. James studied politi politics, philosophy and economics at Oxford University and has taken the time to answer our one question today, which I, for which I'm very grateful. So James, we've had the most astronomically sizable shifts in everything culturally and media and business in the last uh, 12 months, and we're almost exactly a year to the day since we went into the lockdown in the UK. Um, so what do you think that our industry has learned, if anything, from the pandemic? Thanks, Julie. Well, it's um, a big question to ask, and I think that I'd kick off by saying that the acceleration of streaming trends has been a huge theme for us and, and everyone in the industry. If you look at unmatched viewing uh, on Barb, I think it's up almost 50% prior to uh, versus prior year, and uh, with linear TV only being being up single digits. Um, and I think streaming is now 25% at least, or a third of all, all viewing. So it's a it's a huge change. Um, it was of course already happening, but uh, now it's it's across more more people, more age groups, and there's no turning the clock back. You know, yeah. once, um, once I mean, consumption will obviously go down after after lockdown in general for for video, one would imagine. But that someone's streaming habit, you know, once once someone's worked out how to download the app and actually connect to it, uh, that's very unlikely to change. Um, so there's been a real acceleration, and I believe it's a permanent change. And the reality is that if you're a video provider, a broadcaster, a studio, if you're not where your customers are then you're not going to have a sustainable path forward. And I think that we've seen that very clearly in how the stock market has you know, valued uh, media stocks. And it's uh, a, a simple fact that we've seen a lot of streaming services launch yeah. in recognition yeah. of this fact over the last year. And you must be quite excited about everything that's happening at Discovery Plus. Tell us a little bit about what you've been most interested in doing. Yes, exactly. I mean, I think we had, um, you know, we all saw uh, Disney Plus launch into the first lockdown, which obviously wasn't wasn't planned because one can't plan plan those things. But um, you know, we when we we had our plans to to launch Discovery Plus in the UK, and that coincided with the with 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 the second lockdown or the third lockdown. I I, I lose track. Yeah. Um, and you know, ultimately, again, whilst you can never ne never plan that, the the fact is that. I think that we saw a, a very good adoption and, and, and take up, you know, part, partly because uh, people are looking for media, video to consume and, and people are obviously, uh, you know, stuck, stuck at home uh, and, and video consumption has gone up. So, yeah, I, I think that it was, it was, um, it was sort of, uh, you know, good timing from that, from that perspective. And, and we've certainly seen the results of that. Do you think now that people will start to go out more, will we see that, streaming levels continue but they're just doing it on their mobile and starting to incorporate it do you expect to see more people when we start commuting again sitting there looking at it on the screen in a way that perhaps they didn't post pre-covid do you think there might be that slight cultural shift in people's minds about streaming yeah yeah well i think um i i think i think it depends on which on which content so um 
you know, the content that people can fit into in a snackable way uh, or live content that they would otherwise have missed. Um, I think we'll see a, a bit more of that on, on, on devices. But to be honest, I think that uh, we've, what we've seen is, is a big increase on, on, on TV screen consumption of streaming. And mm -hmm. there is no question really that it's, it's more about having the choice and convenience of being able to watch on, and people will watch on the biggest screen that they can. So I think that's still where we will see most of the behavior change on the big screen. That's interesting. And a final, final question for me really about sort of in working practices terms and how you manage your talent yourselves that, uh, uh, you know, within your expanded teams, have you have you noticed any positives that have come out of, of you know, having to work all work remotely? Has it made yes. you know, any democracy across the borders or what's happened from your side? Yes, exactly. Well, I think that there's been there's been a huge uh, impact on on people, on individuals and um, on, a, on a human level, you know, we've all got used to working remotely, obviously, and that has suited some people more than others. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we've discovered that actually people are better at being isolated than we thought. Um, although I would hesitate to uh, make any quick judgments on that, we still don't know the long-term impacts of yes. you know having spent so much time on our own, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that you know what 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 we see in, in the workplace is that. Um, in many cases, it's led to a huge increase in productivity because if you, it's just simple maths. You take out the commuting hours, you take out the traveling between meetings, um, and you add in the sort of expectation of, of accessibility and the fact that you know people are always always available. And what you actually get is um, you 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 get a, a huge increase in the amount of time people are spending spending working, and um, that means that uh, the people who already had a good output. Um, are going to have a higher output, literally, just from the amount of time um, they're available and the amount of time they're, they're they're putting into it. And the fact is that if you have a job which you can do virtually and uh, and and over Zoom, then you you end up you end up you know producing a whole load more. And the fact is that by Thursday evening, in that world, you know a lot of people have done as much as they would have by uh, by, by by Friday evening in the old yeah. world. Um, and so, in, in a sense, that's that's positive in, in the sense of greater productivity. But it's also negative in that it uh, you know it leads to obviously exhaustion uh, potentially and, uh, and and overwork. So, you know, I think I'm I'm a I'm a big advocate of recognizing that uh, that fact. And and I, I'm not you know saying that everyone should have a four day week here. But I think certainly one thing that we've introduced at Discovery is uh, is is a Zoom free Fridays um, oh, really? where, where, we, where we can yes. Yes. Okay, that's very innovative. What a good idea! And do people stick to it, James? Yes, um, it's it's they, they they do stick to it. And I think the important thing is to have a is to lead by example. And so you can't you know set up a Zoom free Friday and then and then ask for a meeting on Friday morning. <laughs> yes, as much as you might want to, James, you're not allowed. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a kind of you know there's a hip, there's a hypocrisy that is that, that people that people look out for so um i think you're going to lead by example and also there's peer pressure uh you know to yeah. to kind of um if 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 you don't if if you if you uh, uh don't set up a meeting then your your colleagues also will not will not feel like they can set up meetings so you know i think um i, I think it's been it's, it's it's important to to recognize that and i think it's a step in the direction perhaps of a longer term change in, in working practices that, that's going to play out over, you know, over the next few months and years. Yeah. Absolutely. Do, do you think it could have, I mean, this is something that's popped up in our winter series of questions with quite a lot of leaders, that there might be an opportunity for this to drive a little bit more um, social mobility around recruitment in regions around the UK, people who aren't all of a sudden centred. I mean, that's already happening, of course, with Channel 4 and the BBC and people expanding out into into different cities outside of London so it's not less London centric already but do you think there is an yes. option then to be able to free up talent a little bit more when we're looking? Yes well um, the interesting thing is that it it that applies of course across regions um, within all parts of the country but it also applies across borders yeah. um, particularly when you you know restrict yourself to a time zone of plus minus, I guess, two hours or so, three hours maximum. Um, and you can you can actually uh, have cross-border teams as well contributing to, to, to projects and work streams that might have been, uh, you know, that wouldn't have felt so natural in the past. Yes. So I think that the, the impact of that is going to, could potentially uh, 
transform the the work, workforce and working practices over the over, over the long term. But I think it's it's also just um, you know re recognizing that the other side of that there's a very there's a huge difference between working virtually with a team that you know and clients that you know and working virtually with people that you haven't met and building new relationships. And I think this is something which we see emerging a lot. Uh, the, the, you might feel totally comfortable working with a team that you know, and then you're a new project, you're having to get to know new people, new people oh. in other countries, um, and the whole thing suddenly becomes a big struggle. Yes. So yeah, I think there's a lot to learn. <laughs> yes, I think there's, a, there's sort of um, definitely been reported on the plus side, a sort of, democratization of of your colleagues regardless of where they are in the world because everyone's on the screen it's not like you're going to default to the people who are just in front of you physically in the office at least there's a kind of like an ability to just think who are the best people from around the globe that we can put around this project so maybe there yeah. are some positives to be come out, out of that <laughs> no i think so I, I think so and actually one of the interesting things about uh the you know the particular situation that we're in is that is that I, I I feel as if it's um it's it's led to people being being more collaborative. Um, yeah. I I feel that that and it's it's and you know in a in a pandemic obviously you know you need to you need to collaborate even with your 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 competitors. I mean as a as as nations we see in the news every day. Um, yes. The, 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 what's what's going on now? The fact is that you know until all countries um, uh, get vaccinations, we're, we're not going to be out of the woods on this. And yeah. and I think. That that it's the same in in, uh, in 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 business. I think I've detected certainly a more collaborative culture right. uh, in our in our industry and a more wi willingness to to collaborate with your competitors, with the understanding that um, that in this situation there's a lot more to gain from yeah. uh, being being sort of open to ways that you can benefit from working together, even with people with whom you may compete on a daily basis. And the, the people who've managed to figure that out. I mean, if you if you look at uh, this is just an example because you know we we work with uh, with Sky closely and they distribute um, Discovery Plus on Sky Q. But you know Sky had been doing that with Netflix, with Disney, with Amazon, and with us, um, BT and Now TV. You know BT took over and started distributing Now TV from Sky, and and all of this happened uh, over the last few 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 months. Uh, and I think that these are big changes in. The way that people work together in the industry that um that you know very much like the changes in consumer behavior and streaming will continue to be uh, a, a, a permanent feature that's brilliant thank you so much james so interesting such a lot to to think about because such huge macro changes collaboration streaming a future of streaming where you might be out of the house as well and what that might look like and consumption of content how that might change when we're out about Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for spending the time with us today, well, with me today for one question and um, hopefully speak to you again in the summer question, James, and look forward to seeing how it all goes and how it grows. You're very welcome. Thank you.